credit score has become in many ways a, a proxy for race. When it comes to making loans, the law says lenders are supposed to be colorblind, black, white, Hispanic. As long as you can pay the loan back, they can't treat you any differently. Jennifer Baker doesn't believe that's how it really works. I think when people think of this side of downtown Dallas, that this is low income uh, or people who don't want to work and who don't want to pay their bills, whereas that's not, the, that's not the case. Baker is a nurse, a homeowner, and she's been a customer with the same bank since 1999. But over the years, Baker says her bank has made it hard or impossible to get credit so she had to turn elsewhere for her $89,000 home loan. I can't walk into my bank and ask them for money. Not give it to me, loan it to me. I'll pay you back. I pay everyone else back, no problem, but they're the only one that does not seem to trust me. As we've reported over and over again, banks in Dallas make relatively few loans to the low income and minority communities that live below Interstate 30. Some people are telling me that's just good business. Why should banks be required to loan money to people that cannot pay them back? They only lend to people who qualify. Banks will loan to green Martians if likely to be paid back. But the reality is this is about more than just business. It's also about race. We've been crunching the numbers and we have found that blacks and Hispanics are denied loans at much higher rates than whites even when they have a similar ability to repay. To analyze denial rates in mortgage lending from banks and mortgage companies, we collaborated with the nonprofit Reinvestment Fund, which focuses on advancing economic justice. And we started by looking at denial rates for all applicants in Dallas in 2019 and 2020. And while this kind of public data doesn't include all the factors a lender would consider, we found whites are denied for mortgages 5.8% of the time, Blacks 16.1 and Hispanics 13.8. That means in Dallas, if you're black, it's three times more likely you're gonna get denied for a loan. So what happens if we run those numbers again, but now instead of looking at all applicants in Dallas, we just look at more qualified people. If they've got enough savings for a down payment of 10% or more and enough income to pay their debts with close to 60% of their paycheck left over. Well, of these more qualified applicants, we found whites are denied 4.3% of the time, blacks 12.1 and Hispanics 5.8. So even when they're more qualified, blacks are still three times as likely to get denied. And here's an even more interesting finding. Look at the denial rate of less financially qualified whites. It's 12.2%. So if you're keeping score, if you're more qualified in black, you'll be treated about the same as someone who is less qualified and white. What's missing in all that information are credit scores. Those aren't public, so we can't see that data. But we do know that carrying a lot of debt can be bad for your credit score. And we also know that high debt is a problem that's much more common for black families than it is for whites. Black and brown communities are always going to be behind because we've been systematically held out of accessing credit, which is... Jeremy Greer is the co-founder of the nonprofit group Liberation in a Generation. He recently testified in Congress for credit score reform, and he's got a big problem with credit scores. Why is your opinion that that's what's driving this, the credit score? Well, credit scores are inherently biased. What research shows with, with black households is that the higher your income, the more debt you have. And what's a real driver of that debt for like middle income black people is student loan debt. So there are things that stack against black or brown communities that make the system in which they use to determine the credit score inherently biased against black and brown people. The Urban Institute analyzed federal data and found one third of blacks don't have a credit score, also known as a FICO score, because of a lack of credit history. Another third has a credit score that's poor to fair, 14% have a score that's fair to good, and only 20% have a score that's good or better, compared to 50% of whites. In Dallas, that looks like FICO scores in white neighborhoods that are, on average, 156 points higher than in black ones. The FICO score is not the only 
predictor of default risk. And yet the FICO score historically has been used in making those decisions. Ben Struby opened a small mortgage business after quitting his job at a big bank. He was disillusioned about the emphasis on catering to people with healthy credit scores and overlooking borrowers with lower credit scores who might still qualify for a loan, but were less profitable and more time consuming. Bigger banks are cherry picking um, high net worth clients. You know, the big bank offers wealth management services. They offer uh, CD accounts, checking savings. They want you for the life of your loan. And so if you've got a 620 FICO score, do you have money to invest with them? Probably not. What do the banks have to say? Well, the trade group, the American Bankers Association, points out it has successfully lobbied for ways to lower barriers to minority home ownership, like the removal of strict caps on how much income an applicant uses to pay off debt. It also supports reforming how credit scores are calculated. Right now, for example, rent, utility, and mobile phone information are only on your credit report if you miss a payment. But these are major expenses, and Greer says families should also be getting credit when they make on-time payments. It's an idea that's getting some traction in the mortgage industry, but still has a long way to go. Homeowners are consistently getting their on-time payments reported to credit bureaus, while renters, who are disproportionately low income, do not. Our money spends the same. Back to Jennifer Baker, who has an excellent credit score and is currently working on her master's degree. She hopes it's gonna help her get ahead, but she'll also graduate with $30,000 of debt to go along with her weariness about the bankers who've previously written her off. That's baloney. That because we live in this area, we can't afford to pay back our money or our credit scores aren't good enough. The bottom line here is that if you're black or Hispanic, it is just harder to get a loan. And saying that that's just how business works ignores the much bigger picture. We have a financial system that lays out obstacles to prosperity depending on the color of your skin. In Dallas, I'm David Schechter reporting.